Let's look at chemistry. We're still on page, <clears throat> page 1123, which is the third page. I want to talk about pages 11 through 17 right now. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in actually at <clears throat> page 17 and give you a tip that will help you as you go back and read through all the Otherwise, sometimes these formulas get a little mind-numbing, okay? <clears throat> How many of you did this in physical science? Do you remember doing the combined gas law, pressure, volume, temperature, pressure, volume, temperature, P1, V1, T1 equals P2, V2 over T2? Do you remember doing this? So the combined gas law takes three laws. One was Boyle's law, one was Charles' law, one was Gay-Lussac's law. Put them all together into one formula. Now, as the book develops it, they start with each one and they do it separately. They talk about what it means and um, give you some pictures, try to help you see the concept for each one, and that is important, okay? I'm not gonna reteach that, the pace does a good job of explaining it, and there are a lot of videos. There are a lot of videos on YouTube that are really cool where teachers have done demonstrations, which I am not set up to do and don't have the time to do right now. There are some great illustrations of these laws. So I would encourage you to uh, do a Google search for some of these laws. Demonstration of Boyle's Law, demonstration of Charles' Law. And watch those so that you can get your head around it and understand it. But I'm gonna give you a clue. This is very pragmatic. In other words, the bottom line is how do you have to use it? And they're gonna use it to solve problems. So we need to remember which formula goes with which law and then be able to plug in the numbers, okay? <clears throat> If we just memorize this one, now notice, I always tell my students, think about the T as kind of being the pedestal. See that? And then we put the P and the V on the top of it. So the T is on the bottom holding up the P and the V. Always that way. All right? Now if we're talking about Boyle's Law, Boyle's Law says we hold the temperature constant. So that means we take out the temperature, what would we be left with? P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Right there. That is Boyle's Law. What if for Charles' Law we hold the P constant? So we take the P out, P doesn't change, so we can take it right out. So we would be left with volume 1 over temperature 1 equals volume 2 over temperature 2. And you can just plug in the three numbers they give you, solve for the fourth piece of cake, all right? And then Gay-Lussac's law, we take out the volume, so P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. The ones and the twos mean one is like the initial, so in the, the pro, the, whatever the scenario is, the experiment starts under these conditions, something changes, okay? Maybe the pressure changes or the temperature changes and you're saying, how does that affect the volume? So you start here, you make some changes, you can measure what the third quantity would be. Now, an important point, you see it right here. Always, always, always in solving these problems, we must have temperature in Kelvin. Maybe you remember that from physical science and math as well. You have to take Celsius and convert to Kelvin. So if they give you Celsius, we add 273. Sometimes they even would say when you're done, convert the, the, the temperature back to Celsius. So then you just subtract 273 and you're at the Celsius, okay? Um, <clears throat> let us, oh, I wanted to point out, the way to keep this straight, here's how I keep it straight. Okay? I have to have a little mental clue. When I think of boil, I think of B-O-I-L, boil water. What do you do to boil water? You change the temperature, right? You're adding heat to change the temperature, so I associate temperature with boil. Now, when I grew up, Charlie Brown was a big cartoon. I don't know if you've seen Charlie Brown. I'm sure you've seen the penis cartoons, right? Charlie Brown was always banging his head against a tree saying, good grief. And he was under a lot of pressure from Lucy. So I always associate pressure with poor old Charlie Brown, all right? So temperature is associated with boil, pressure is associated with Charlie Brown. 
Um, Gay Lusak. Um, you make up your own one for that, or just remember that it's the third one. Okay, volume, Gay Lusak. And so once you pull that out, whatever's left from the combined gas law is that person's law. Okay. The textbook reviews all these, gives you some ways to understand them, and uh, then applies them to solving some real simple problems. Piece of cake, as long as you change the temperature, and you do have to be careful about pressure. There's several ways of measuring pressure that the book talks about, um, but just you just have to be consistent, okay? I'm going to stop this video and we'll do one where we take a problem and uh, solve it using these laws, okay?